Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Sarah Wong. Our top stories tonight. Online media outlet Stan News shuts down hours after National Security Police arrest seven people on suspicion of publishing seditious materials. Police freeze $61 million of Stan News assets and accuse the outlet of inciting hatred against the government and judicial system. And incoming lawmakers were given a crash course ahead of starting their jobs next week. Another pro-democracy news outlet has folded after a massive raid by National Security Police this morning. The closure of Stan News comes after seven people were arrested for conspiracy to publish seditious materials. They include singer Dennis Ho and barrister Margaret Ng, who were former board members of the company. Cho Hina Chen lists off our coverage. In handcuffs, Stan News acting chief editor Patrick Lam was escorted back to his company's office in Kuantong. In a massive pre-dawn operation, over 200 police officers swooped on multiple locations across the city. Armed with a warrant issued under the national security law, officers raided the premises, which the online media outlet called home. Staff were allowed to return to their posts, but only after their personal details were taken down. Hours later, officers hauled boxes of evidence, including computers, onto a truck. Lam was then led away for further questioning. In a statement, police said they arrested six current or former staff members of an online media company. But instead of the national security law, they were accused of conspiracy to publish seditious materials, a colonial-era ordinance which had not been invoked for years until recently. It is believed that apart from Lam, those also arrested were his predecessor, Chung Poi Kun, who resigned last month, and former board member Chao Ta Chi, who was also in charge of the website's science section. Three others were not directly involved in the outlet's day-to-day -day operations. They were pro-democracy singer Denise Ho, barrister and former lawmaker Margaret Ng, and former Council of Social Service chief executive Christine Fang, a bronze Bauhinia star recipient who once held a raft of public positions. A seventh person was confirmed to be arrested this afternoon. It is believed she was Chan Pui Man, the former associate publisher of Apple Daily. The wife of Chung, Chan, is already under remand for allegedly breaching the national security law. Another prominent figure of the outlet, Deputy Assignment Editor Ronson Chan, also received a visit from police at around 6 a.m. After briefly streaming the exchange online, Chan was told to stop the broadcast, which officers said impeded their work. The chairman of the Journalist Association clarified later that he was not arrested although his press card, bank book, ATM card and electronic equipment were seized. Just after 4 p.m., Stan News announced on Facebook that it was winding up and all employees would be dismissed. It thanked the support of readers, adding it had tried to safeguard the core values of democracy, human rights, freedom, rule of law and justice over the past seven years. Johanna Chan, HKIBC. Following the arrest, police accused Stan News of spreading hatred against the city's government and courts. They also want to figure out why the news site has so much money after authorities froze around $61 million in their account. When no one tells us more. Stan News' demise came right in the middle of a police press conference explaining their operations this morning. Asked whether he felt the force had successfully shut down a news outlet they didn't like, Steve Lee of the National Security Unit said this. I feel success is to detect the detector case of a seditious intent involved in national security issues, but not targeting any persons. According to Lee, Stand News had repeatedly published articles that attempted to incite hatred towards the SAR government and the judicial system. It also encouraged others to use violence and break the law. The officer also pointed to the company's $61 million in assets, which the force has now frozen, 
adding that much of the money had been deposited in secretive ways, which made it difficult for law enforcement to figure out where they came from. Stand News claims it does not accept sponsorships or subscription fees, and the website doesn't seem to have much ads. So how are they so abundant in cash that they can even open an office in England, he questioned. Going forward, police will investigate the source of Stand News's money, the company's goal, and whether it has any links with foreign forces, Lee said. He also denied the force was targeting the news industry. The number one concern for us is don't be biased. Don't be biased. You, you know well how to report, how to be a responsible uh, reporter, how to, how to make a non-biased report to your readers. That's all I can give you. In a separate event, Chief Secretary John Lee took it a step further when asked whether these arrests were an erosion to press freedom. Anybody who attempts to make use of media work as a tool to pursue their political purpose or other interests contravenes the law, offenses that endanger national security. They are the evil elements that damage press freedom. There were signs of trouble for Stand News long before this morning. After Apple Daily shut down in June this year, the outlet became the next target for many pro-Beijing politicians and government officials. Just earlier this month, Secretary for Security Chris Tang named and shamed the news site for running a smear campaign against the authorities' Smart Prison Initiative. He also accused Stand News of making inaccurate reports about officers raiding the Chinese Chinese University in 2019. Three days after Next Media closed down, Stand News reacted by announcing a series of measures to protect its staff, readers and supporters. That included scrubbing its website of a number of blog posts, opinion pieces and reposted texts. It also stopped accepting donations from new members. Staff were terminated and rehired with different contracts, while six directors of its parent company, including those who were arrested today, resigned. Wen Wang, HKIBC. The Journalist Association said it was heart-wrenching to learn about the closure of Stand News. In a statement, the group said the closures of Stand News and Apple Daily has a chilling effect on the industry. It urged authorities to protect freedom of the press so that journalists can discharge their duties without fear. But lawmaker-elect for the publication sector, Kenneth Falk, tried to allay concerns, saying freedom of the press is enshrined in the basic law. Legal sector lawmaker-elect Ambrose Lam added there will be a fair trial for the accused. The city's lawmakers-elect were given a crash course today, with council officials giving newcomers tips on conducting business. But they first need to get through the oath-taking ceremony next week, and some are already nervous. Johanna Chen tells us more. It was as if they were students on the first day back to school. Dozens of soon-to-be lawmakers were given a crash course in the Legislative Council today. And while some took the opportunity to shoot selfies, Others use the time to try and memorize the faces of their future colleagues. The jolly mood was a stark contrast to the previous LegCo terms, which were split into rival camps. Secretary General Kenneth Chen then gave them a lecture, telling the members how to conduct their business for the coming four years. DAB Vice Chairman Brave Chan, lawmaker-elect for the city's delegates to China's top legislature and advisory body, said he has lots to learn. He admitted it will take a lot of time to get used to the rules and documents. Outgoing LegCo President Andrew Leung noted the new members were nervous, but asked good questions. The group then returned in the afternoon for a mock oath-taking session. complete with the singing of the national anthem. I, Chuk Yuyan Tommy, swear by Almighty God, 
Members were then given the chance to practice their oaths. But Leung was not totally satisfied with their performance. He called on members to sing the anthem with more force and spirit, adding they must show up on time or face disqualification. He also reminded them to be extra careful with a few words, saying they must not get them wrong. It's quite complicated. I mean, it, it seems easy, but uh, you can't miss any words, you can't do any mistakes, so it needs a lot of practice. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, for myself, I'm planning to do some practice tonight to make sure that everything will go smooth. The SAR emblem in the chamber was earlier replaced with a national emblem. Leung insisted it was purely for oath-taking purposes. The ceremony is set for next Monday. Johanna Chan, HKIBC. Hong Kong's Omicron case tally has reached 70 after 12 more cases were confirmed today. The four men and eight women aged 19 to 79 arrived in previous days. Two were detected while undergoing quarantine, while the rest were screened upon arrival at the airport. Authorities also announced 14 new COVID patients in the past day. They arrived from the United States, Britain, Philippines, Germany, Canada and Australia. This included a 44-year-old Cathay Pacific crew member and a 15-year-old girl who arrived from the United States one day after the other. A brand new hotel at the airport has been added to the government's list of designated quarantine hotels for foreign domestic helpers. More than 1,100 rooms at Regala Sky City will be up for grabs from tomorrow. It will cost $750 per night. It will replace around the same number of beds at Penny's Bay Quarantine Center, which will no longer accept reservations for helpers. Authorities explained the center needs to be used for other quarantine purposes. And coming up after the break. Authorities around the world sound alarm as Omicron drives a global surge in cases. And observers accuse Russia of erasing history by ordering a human rights group to shut down.